Greetings. My name is John McCackman, and my brief today is going to be on stress and anger management. Something that we deal with on a daily basis. To understand how stress affects you will help you in managing stress. Our goal today is to learn the difference between a stressor and stress, learn three responses to stress, and discuss three techniques for managing stress. Stress is defined as any change to which you must adapt. Also, it's a neutral event. We give it meaning, good or bad. A neutral event could be a meeting. You're in a meeting or you're going to a meeting and you're either excited about the meeting or you're stressed about the meeting. Matter of fact, I've had a colleague who was very stressed over meetings. He felt that he had to be well prepared in advance in case the director asked him any questions. He wanted to be prepared to answer those questions. He stressed so much over going to meetings that he would prepare an hour in advance gathering information and data and carrying several binders with him. So this neutral event was very stressful for this individual. A stressor is internal and external. Internal is a thought or belief or an attitude, for example, about, about a meeting. External, um, excuse me, yeah, external is a, something that a tragedy or a loss. Maybe you lost a, a dear friend or a family member. Physical symptoms of stress are increased heart rate, increased blood pressure, increased breathing rate. Something to remember is if your blood pressure is maintained at 140 over 90 or higher, you will suffer a heart attack or a stroke or both. Behavioral indicators, lack of enthusiasm, withdrawal, uh, change in sleeping pattern. This is your body's way of saying you're not managing your stress. So you've got to do things, you've got to make some changes to manage that stress. A good example is if you do not drink enough water and you dehydrate, your body will give you signals, one being cramps, another being nausea or headaches. So these are signs that you're not taking care of your body's stress level. Another behavioral indicator is talking louder and louder or frequent screaming. Increased number of conflicts. If you have stress in your life and you're not managing that stress, then you're not going to have the patience to deal with your everyday daily issues at work or at home. So your patients are very limited. Increased use of tobacco and alcohol. I met a gentleman who decided to relieve some stress by having some, some cocktails. What had happened was his colleagues asked him if he wanted to go have a couple of cocktails. It was a pretty stressful week. And this is Thursday night about 11.30. And he decided to take them up on it. Well, he woke up the next morning without a clue on how he got home. So he got ready for work, went downstairs, kissed his wife and two daughters goodbye, and he was off to work. His wife saw that he forgot his lunch. She takes the lunch, runs it outside to him, looks at the car, screams and passes out. He puts the car in park and he walks up to her and revives her and asks her what's wrong. And all she could do was point to the car and cry. There was a little eight-year-old girl embedded in the grill of his car. He hit this little girl so hard that her whole body was deep into the grill and all you could see was her little hand hanging over the bumper. You might be asking yourself, what's an eight-year-old doing out at about two in the morning? She was a sleepwalker and this gentleman has to deal with this for the rest of his life. Cognitive indicators, poor problem solving, poor attention, Poor memory. Uh, you may have some issues that come up, up to you during your, your work day and because you're so stressed you can't think straight and you get frustrated and you end up lashing out either at a colleague, at a boss, 
or even at a family member at home, or maybe one of your children. Emotional indicators, depression, tearfulness, withdrawal, uh, agitation, panic, frustration. All these emotional indicators you will feel. You will also feel anger. Anger is triggered by too much stress. Anger is a second emotion. Contrary to popular belief, there are people who believe that their boss wakes up in an, in an angry mood and comes to work angry. There are stressors that are causing someone to be angry. Everybody has stress in their life. What is anger? Anger is an emotional state accompanied by physiological and biological changes caused by external and internal issues. Uh, they can be triggered by memory. For example, September 11, 2001, when we had that horrible attack on the Twin Towers, I was an active duty service member at the time. Uh, I do see my veteran friends during September 11th time frame every year, and they do vent a lot of frustration and a lot of anger due to those attacks. So there's a memory, there's an example of, of you know, that a memory can, can trigger anger. Expressing anger. Anger is a natural adaptive response to threats. It inspires powerful behavior to help us defend ourselves against threats. It's also necessary for survival. However, it's not healthy to lash out at everyone. And, and we, you just can't do that. Uh, I've had a client who said to me, well, I get angry when I'm stressed. I get really angry because it's a reflex. Uh, a ref reflex is not an excuse. You are that reflex. You are in control of yourself. Nobody else is in control of you but you. No matter how much stress somebody puts on you, you're in control of you. So the reflex excuse, people aren't going to buy that. How do we deal with anger? We use conscious and unconscious methods. The main approaches include expressing, suppressing, and calming. Sometimes you can take a deep breath and count to ten. You can calm yourself down. You can talk to a colleague. You can talk to friends or family members. Because when you discuss your issues about stress or anger, then you take that burden off of your shoulders and you share it with other people. So you feel as if it's no longer just your issue. It's yours and your friends or your family members. So you feel a little relieved about that. And it's easier for you to deal with your stress and anger. Internal dialogue, self-talk. It's a very powerful tool we have as humans. If you say you can do something, you will complete that task. If you feel you can't do something, then you will not complete that task. You've already defeated yourself. I put this to a test. I had a friend of mine who was a very big, strong guy, can bench about 500 pounds. And I said to him, I'd like to arm wrestle you, and I'll make a bet I can beat you. The one stipulation I said to him was, he has to continually tell himself that he cannot beat John. There's just no way. I cannot beat him. I cannot. I cannot beat John. And I had him repeat that to himself over and over as we were arm wrestling. And a couple of times, I, have, I also mentioned to him, he, he had to say it out loud. So, I ended up defeating him. Or did he defeat himself? Ways to manage your stress and your anger. And don't just use one of these. Use several of them. Because if you just exercise, and all you're doing is exercising, that might just relieve a little bit of stress. But you may, you may need other uh, ways to relieve stress. Take a walk on the beach. Talk to friends and family. Uh, read a good book. Good nutrition. Get plenty of sleep. Deep breathing exercises. All these techniques are very helpful. Again, don't just use one. Use more than one. And what this does is it gives you a positive outlook. And if you've got that positive outlook, then you're a good person to be around. You're very positive and helpful, and you have patience, and you're going to end up being the go-to person. 
Don't let stress manage you. You manage stress. And don't let anger control you. You control you. Nobody else. We discussed today different types of stress and stressors. We have talked about different ways to manage stress. Understand that you control you. Nobody else does. My name is John McAfferin. I wish you all great health. And this concludes my brief.